Hello, my name's Charles. You're watching CBIT. Today I'm going to show you how to create a Storage Craft Shadow Protect recovery CD or recovery environment. This is so that you can do a backup and restore of a machine, whether it's a VM or a physical host, directly to a, either a network drive or an external USB device or a system. It doesn't matter whether it's Windows or Linux. Uh, I will be doing a Windows machine. This is ideal if you've got a machine which needs backing up and you need to do it for testing purposes to be able to restore back to a previous configuration. If it's a physical machine, if it's a virtual machine, you can just take a snapshot. But if it isn't, if it's a physical one, it's ideal for that. Um, so also to do this, you will need to have a current license for Shadow Protect. We do, we do have our license, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, if you haven't got a license, you will need to purchase one to be able to do the items which I am looking at. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create the recovery media. So I'm going to be doing that on this. So a while ago, Shadow, Shadow Protect was brought out by ArcServe, another backup and recovery software company. Um, I personally have been using this software for a quite a number of years. And depending on what one of any of our clients are, this is one of the solutions which we provide for clients. We do have other backup solutions which we use, um, but this one does exactly what we need it to. Um, so we're going to do the Shadow Protect Recovery Environment. If we just Google that, it will then take us through to the items that we need. So it takes you through to as you can see, the Storage Class website, but it's owned by ArcServe. OK, like, there are a couple of options available. There is the cross-platform recovery environment which can recover Windows and Linux machines, or there is the the Windows um, RE Builder version, which is the, the Recovery Environment Builder. That one uses the Windows 10 ADK. And uh, it's the one which we're actually going to be using today. So we need to go to storagecraft.com forward slash ISO. And this is where you need to input your product key. If you do not have a product key, you won't be able to download the software. Okay, once you've uh, put in your key, you are then able to download the Recovery Environment Builder. Just going to download that now quickly. We then just run the program. And we just go through the prompts for setting this up. Now that's installed, we can run the recovery environment builder. 
and this is where it's going to need to download the Windows ADK. So the link Okay, the link on the actual uh, software doesn't work. Okay, we don't want Windows 11. We want the Windows 10 ADK. I'm not sure what version is required. Look. Um, Okay, so it's the 1607 one we actually need. Okay. So I just need to find the 1607 ADK. There we go. We download that and we run the program. So that's just going to install in the def in the default place, and there are certain items that we do need on here. So the items that we need are we need deployment tools and Windows pre-installation environment. They're the two options that we need. Unselect everything else, and we should only have deployment tools on Windows PE. Click yes to that, and we just let that download and install. I'm going to speed up through this process because it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, that is now downloaded. It did take quite a while actually. Um getting on for well over an hour. So now that we've downloaded that, we just need to download the recovery deployment program again. And now it knows that it's actually got the latest uh, ADK setup already available. Okay, so we are going to be doing a recovery environment. We've got the option of 32 bit or 64 bit. And 
English. I don't know why it's only United States. English was first done in England uh, or the UK. Um, we're just going to leave the others as they are. I'm not putting any additional drivers in here. Um, if you've got devices which have got specific drivers, which you know you're going to need, you can put them into the build. But you can load drives in once you've actually loaded it up anyway. I'm just going to click on the build icon at the top. And we just leave it to let it go through its preparation and installation and configuration. I'll let this go through. I'm going to fast forward through it and I'll see you on the other side. That didn't take long at all. So we've now built the ISO. We click OK. We can now either burn it to USB or DVD. I've got neither on this device, so we can't do them. Um, but I say, when, when, if you want to build burn this, you just select the option you want and click Start. Got the option here again at the top, just to burn the ISO. We need to, and that will then. So, if we put a DVD in or not USB, we can then, and then um, burn it. Isn't a problem. Hoping the ISO is going to be in this folder. Look, see if we can find the ISO if we needed to copy it elsewhere. There we go, there is our ISO, which is ready to, uh, if we needed to, we could copy this off here, put it onto an external drive, if you've got an external drive which can mount devices, or onto another machine which has actually got a DVD drive so you can burn it, uh, or CD, actually the size of the disc, it's less than 700 megs, so it'll fit onto a, a CD. So that once we've burnt it, that is then ready to be booted and get up, get working. Right. In my next video, I will be going through how to actually do a backup and a restore using this ISO. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe, comment on the video, like the video, and hit the bell notification for upcoming videos. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.